What's up YouTube? My name is John Jagsney and today we're talking about how I made the particles in this guy. So this is a little title sequence or title logo animation I did for a toy project and we'll talk about some of the other stuff in the future but I want to show you how I just made the particles. Fortunately, there's no plugins for this. It's all free. It's all After Effects. So let's go into the very loud laptop and talk about how to make some very simple particles in Adobe After Effects. All right, we are in the default view of Adobe After Effects using no plugins today. To start with some particles, we are going to hit Control Y on our keyboard and that will create a new solid. We will make sure it matches the composition size. So you can just hit that button, 1920 by 1080. Color doesn't matter, hit OK. Now we're going to go to our effects and presets let it load for a second and we'll look up particle and we can see I have a plugin here. We're not going to use the plugin today, but I highly recommend checking out Trap Code Particular if you have not already. It is a paid plugin, but you can achieve the same results much faster. But we're going to do this for free. So we're going to go into CC Particle World and we'll see we have the effect and let's go to forest just so you can see what's happening. That's it, so there's some particles. So how are we gonna make this look like the sample trailer? Well, first what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the birth rate to 0.1. And what that is is basically how many particles are going to be birthed every second, so to speak. Next, we're gonna change the longevity, longevity to seven so that they're going to last longer on our frame. Next, we're gonna go to our particle. We're gonna set the particle to a faded sphere. So instead of it being a line, it will now be a sphere. We're going to set the birth size to 0.1 and the death size to 0.1. Max opacity 75% only because sometimes it's kind of nice to like have a little bit of transparency in those particles, but you could set that to 100% if you want like full transparency because it is a faded sphere, it will sort of fade out on the edge of the particle. Set the death color to the same yellow. You could change it to any color you want, but we're gonna keep it there. Close the particle, we'll go into the producer. Now the producer is where the particles are being birthed. So we're gonna set the position to negative 0.5 and that's just gonna set it to the very edge, far left edge of our composition. You could set it to the opposite side if you want. And then we're gonna set the position to say like 0.2 and it'll put it, let's just say like in the lower left hand corner. I want my particles to come up and to the uh, right. So start on the left side. Uh, we'll set the radius to, let's just say zero, zero, zero for now. And we'll talk about everything else in just a moment. Uh, next, we're gonna set the physics setting. So the physics is how the particles are moving. We'll set this to a cone axis. So the particles will come out from a cone, so to speak. And you can kind of see a sort of visual representation of where the part particles are coming from based on this little sort of axis controller here. And you could futz with that if you want to. I normally don't, I actually use the settings to be a little bit more fine tuned, but you could play with this axis if you want to. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the velocity to 0.3. And that's how fast the particles are gonna move. And we're gonna set the gravity to zero. And the reason why we wanna set the gravity to zero is we don't want any gravity to affect these particles. We, we just want them to come up for now. So if you look now, it's gonna be coming up from the cone and we only see half of it at the moment, but it's coming up in a cone direction. Now from here, what we can do is we can change the directional axis. So right now it's at negative one for the Y axis and we can set that to zero just for fun. And it's gonna do pretty much the same thing. And what we can do is we can rotate the X axis and it will change the direction in which things will move. Actually, you know what, let's change the Y axis. The 
uh, negative, almost negative 0.1 for the y-axis. And it's gonna give us a little bit of a sort of like movement slightly to the right. Now I want these particles to move a little bit faster. So what we're gonna do is we're going to increase the velocity just a hair. And we're gonna increase the resistance. What the resistance does is as the particle sort of approaches its death, as it gets further away from the point, it'll meet some resistance. So it'll slow down basically. Let's just bring that up by just a hair, like 0.1. And then maybe we'll bring the position down just a little bit more so we can... Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Now if you play that back, let's go to third resolution, go to the beginning of our composition. Maybe we'll bring it up. And the reason why I'm bringing it up is that the particles aren't starting exactly where I wanted to, and that's just because the producer is actually kind of far away. So, all right, not bad. And then what we're gonna do is change the position of the X, maybe by like 0.4, just bring it in just a little bit, and then bring the position down. Now, this looks pretty cool and all that. Now, my biggest problem with it, though, is the particles are kind of static at the moment. So the way we combat that in, say, a third-party plugin is you would use a tool that would call called Turbulent Disposition. So basically, it would sort of move the particles in a sort of wavy pattern, kind of like a spark. When you look at a campfire, the sparks don't fly in a straight line. They kind of like come up kind of fast and then kind of go all over the place. So, how are we going to achieve that look? Well, what we can do here is we can add another effect. Let's call it a turbulent displace. It's very similar to what the third-party plugins would do, but less control. So, we'll add the turbulent displace here, and if we look through, we can see it's kind of doing some weird funky thing with the particles. It's basically moving the particles along a sort of fractal pattern. So a fractal pattern is basically a, you know what, I'll just show you really quick. Let's just make a solid fractal noise. And this is a fractal pattern. And a fractal pattern is basically a series of like very intense um, distortions over on layered on top of one another. So you don't need to know the science behind that or anything. Basically all you need to know is where the darker parts are, your layer is not affected. Where the lighter parts are, the white parts or the gray parts, that's where your layer is being affected. So let's delete this layer really quick. It's basically an invisible sort of fractal pattern that's over your layer and it's creating this sort of cool wavy pattern. So let's collapse the particle world and show the turbulent display settings. And let's just bring the amount to like 30 and then the size a little bit higher. And then let's set the position to zero and then say 1080. So that's because the very center position is now in the bottom left corner. And then if we play that back, the particles are kind of like waving about and all that, but I kind of want them to move a little bit faster. So let's go into our velocity settings and crank that up. Maybe bring the resistance down and maybe bring the um, axis to point in a slightly different direction. And we can see with this indicator here, it's kind of like pointing up and to the right. So, not bad. Now, definitely not the most perfect particle system in the world. You can definitely futz with these settings. But what I wanted to show you was basically how to control this producer and use this effect in Adobe After Effects to get some basic particles. Now, if I were to give this a little bit more TLC, the last thing I would do is add a glow effect. So let's go into our effects and presets, glow, and uh, 
see I have lots of different types of glows. Let's go to stylize glow, drop that on, and it'll add a little bit of a glow to our particles. Let's bring down that threshold, crank up that radius, and then maybe bring up that intensity. Let's see what, how that looks. Ooh, that's fun. And then what we can do is, I actually don't like how big these particles are. Let's go back into our CC particle world and go to the particle settings and set that to 0.05 for the birth size and 0.05 for the death size. And now we have this sort of look, maybe bring the position over just a hair. Now, the last thing you could do is, I know we said we could have the radius be a little bit bigger. That's basically how big is the point in which particles are being birthed from. So I know we said that zero, zero, zero earlier, but let's say we want it to be a bit bigger. Let's crank up that Y radius. So how tall that producer will be by, let's say 0.3-ish. And then maybe how wide it is by like 0.1 and then the Z maybe by like 0.5. We can see down here that producer is just getting bigger. And then what that will do is if we go into our fit comp, get up to 100%, and then go to the very beginning, let that play. You know, that actually looks pretty good. So it's not the easiest set of particles to do, but you can definitely achieve this look. And hey, guess what? We did this completely free in Adobe After Effects using three effects. That was CC Particle World, Turbulent Displace, and A Glow. So that is how I would create particles in Adobe After Effects. If you want to ask me a question on any specific settings for this, let me know in the comment section down below and I'd be more than happy to give you a hand with any of this. But that's it. I hope you learned something. If you did, drop it in the comments. I will talk to you beautiful people very, very soon. The last thing we gotta talk about is we have some new YouTube subscribers. Give me one second. All right, first one on the list of new YouTube subscribers, we have Galen Corbett. Thank you for subscribing. I believe you subscribed after seeing the April Solomon video, which the link is up here. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate you taking the time. If I recall correctly, are you April's sister? Yeah, I think so. Thanks for subscribing. I really appreciate it. I hope you're doing well. I hope I have the opportunity to meet you at some point in the future. Next on the YouTube subscriber, new friends, Hales. Hello, Hales. Um, you know, a fun fact, when I went to uh, the Grand Canyon the other month, uh, other week, and it, uh, it started hailing during our um, campfire, so we couldn't have a campfire. So that was not fun, but that has nothing to do with you. Thank you, thank you for subscribing. Mr. Hales, I appreciate it, and uh, thanks for sticking around. And then the last one is uh, a Mr. Jeremy Stewart. Thank you, Jeremy, I appreciate it. And I like your, um, your uh, profile picture on the YouTubes. I like those glasses, they're badass. All right, well, that's it. That's Particles. Those are the new YouTube subscribers, and I will see you beautiful people in the next one. Bye. Lens cap. Oh, God. Why does this always happen? All right, we're, we're going to hand you. High five. Bye.